What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this 2024 BMW X2. This one is an X-Drive 28i finished in Storm Bay Metallic. Base price for the X2 is about $42,000. However, this one has the premium package, which is four grand, M Sport package, as well as a driver's assistance package, bumping this particular car to about $52,700. So let's get right into BMW's compact car, see what this little crossover has to offer. Underneath the hood of the 2024 BMW X2, you're going to find the 2-liter inline 4-cylinder turbo motor. This pumps out 241 horsepower with 295 pound-feet of torque. It's paired to the 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, X-Drive all-wheel drive. It can do 0-60 to 60 in a blistering 6.2 seconds, according to BMW, and it'll top out around 149 miles per hour. This also runs on a 14.3-gallon fuel tank, you can expect 24 miles per gallon in the city with 33 out on the highway and curb weight comes in close to 3,800 pounds. Overall length is 179.3 inches with wheelbase at 106. Width is 72.6 and height is 62.6 inches. Moving on to the exterior styling with BMW's X2. This car also has the shadow line package. So you're going to see the gloss black trim throughout it. We have a nice set of LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. I like the blacked out housing. You can also see the kidney shaped grille and more of a triangular shape, finished in a brushed aluminum color. We have a safety sensor right up in front with a forward facing camera. There's active grille shutters and then a nice triangular shape for this mesh. Down below, you can see more of the active shutters, that same mesh and all that gloss black trim. We have more gloss black trim on the side. You can see a functional air inlet and some pretty nice sharp lines. This does have a very bold front end. I really like it. Honestly, it looks pretty muscular, super aggressive, and I especially love the really sharp lines right in the center of the hood with the BMW badge, and it really makes this look like a more aggressive car. So overall, I think the front end really comes together, has some good styles all throughout it. As you make your way to the side profile, you can see the body color for these fender flares, and then a nice set of 19 inch wheels finished in a two-tone gray and machine silver, all wrapped in the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tire, which is a really cool touch to see. Now the window sticker says this has a $500 credit for the lack of M Sport brakes, so generally you would see those on this particular spec. You have a nice design for the side profile, a sharp body line down below on the underside of the doors. Then you can see the body color mirror caps, integrated turn signal with side view camera, and then flush mounted door handles. You have all gloss black trim surrounding the windows, as well as a panoramic roof up on top. Now the X2 has that coupe design. The X1 is going to be the more traditional shaped SUV at this size. However, the X2 has a pretty cool look with that sloping rear end, good proportions all around, pretty large size for the gas cap. Then you have a nice sharp body line for the rear fenders. You can get a good idea of that rear end sloping into this gloss black spoiler. So they have done a pretty good job giving this that sporty design like an X6, but on the smallest size. And then you're gonna see a nice set of LED taillights, all of your badging throughout the rear end. You got a backup camera along with your BMW logo, and then more gloss black trim in the lower portion of the bumper. You can see some fins in the center to give it a sporty look. And overall, the car does come together very well. It's a little quirky looking. However, I do think it looks pretty fun. Moving to the key fob, you're gonna see the M colors on it. The lock button is the BMW badge, which you can triple tap for remote start. Then we have tailgate release, panic, and unlock. Keeping the key fob in your pocket, you can just grab the door handle. Obviously, it will automatically unlock. This one has the Mocha perforated Vaganza interior with the M Sport seats. You're also gonna see some silver accents all throughout it. Taking a look at the door panel, you can see this soft touch black material with a really cool vinyl. I really like that sporty touch and then all the mocha color with some padding for your armrest. We have all of your controls, a really nice 3D grab handle, your release handle as well as lock and unlock, carbon carton audio with your memory seating, take it release down below along with more storage. Then you have your power controls on the left side of the driver's seat with really nice bolsters. You can also see we have a manual leg rest. If you need that little bit of extra space and then all these perforations right throughout the center with nice stitching. These seats are really sporty looking, I love all the materials, the stitching design to them in general. So it's a pretty cool look. Got the M Sport steering wheel with the smooth black leather. Then you're gonna see this cool silver trim with your M badge and then soft touch on the airbag cover. And then now inside the X2, keep my foot on the brake. We can go ahead and fire it up. 
on the steering wheel. You're gonna get your BMW badge right in the center. A few settings on the left side for all of your cruise control. And then on the right side, we have Bluetooth and audio. And then you can toggle this settings icon and change your configuration of the screen. So I can go up and down for the content of the screen. You can change all sorts of different information in the center. And if I scroll to the right, we can also adjust your layout. So pretty nice the way you're able to adjust all of that. Heads up display, you can also change what you want that to display. You have a few more things in the gauge cluster, as you can tell. So it's a nice screen overall. I do like the single curved screen. It looks pretty cool. There are a set of paddle shifters, and then the left one, when you're driving, you can hold it down, and it'll go into sport mode for a good 10 seconds. On the right stock, we have all the controls for windshield wipers, and then turn signals over on the left. To the left side of the steering wheel, we have a few more lighting controls. You can see ambient lighting on the interior, and I really like the Sensatec dashboard. That is a really cool feature, I think, that makes this car stand out. You can see the cool vinyl material like we saw on the door with this texture, and then the smooth Sensatec up on top with all the stitching. I think that really makes this car look pretty premium. You can also see this plastic textured material around the passenger air vents, more ambient lighting, one massive air vent in the center for the driver. You have a few controls on the right side for defrost, and then taking a look at the center infotainment. We have a few things on the left side you're able to scroll up through. Then you can see apps right here. You have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all sorts of different information are gonna pop up. We have a back button over on this side. Climate control is right here. You're gonna see your different zones you can easily adjust, fan speed. You have your temperature right here. And then if you tap that center icon, you can do your heated seats and steering wheel control. And then we can exit out and go back to the home screen. A few more things on the left side you can see. We go under My BMW. You have a few more items. We have the content you can adjust as well. So kind of your typical BMW stuff. There are no real physical climate controls or anything like that. It's basically all on the screen now. If we go ahead and put the car into reverse, you do have that top-down view, as well as you can change the view by tapping this icon to get a good corner view, panoramic view as well for the rear. You have more adjustments. If I go into drive, you can now see the front camera popping up. And then we can tap P for park. We have our My Modes as well. So if you want to change your drive modes, you just tap that. We have three different designs. Of course, Efficient Mode, it will tone down the car very nicely. And then going into Sport Mode, everything gets more sporty. And I like how it kind of changes the ambient lighting as well. You can see how it's all red in Sport Mode. And then gets back to whatever you want in Personal. So nice design overall. Down below all that, you're gonna see a big wireless phone charging pad with more ambient lighting. You have this spring-assisted piece to help lock your phone in place. Two cup holders, USB ports, and a plug. And then on this center console area, you have your volume icon, you have your auto hold, this icon as well. It'll pop out with driver's assistance, a few more adjustments. And then you have a lot of storage all down below. So nice to see the hidden storage space. And then if we tap this icon, this will open up and we have a decent amount of storage. Over on the far right side, nice size glove box. And then one last look at the interior. It's a nice compact BMW, but honestly, the materials make this feel like a pretty premium car. You have a massive sunshade up on top for that panoramic roof, and then all of your dome lights. There's a camera up here even. You can see a few more controls, thin frameless mirror with garage door buttons underneath. Moving on to the rear seat space, if I grab the door handle, open it up, you're gonna see the same materials all back here on the door. You have that smooth sense attack with the vinyl and then the nice brown color. If we go inside, you can see all the same material as well. This can see three people back here and the center, the headrest will fold down for better driver visibility. And then we can pop this and you're gonna have two cup holders in your armrest. There are climate vents down here with two USB ports and even a nice storage net behind these two seats. And then we have a strap right here you can pull and these seats will fold down nice and flat, giving you good cargo area and room into the back. All right, so hopping into the back seat now with the X2, I do like how these seats recline, which is pretty nice to see for a little car. Um, at their farthest back angle, it's probably where you're always gonna keep them. At five foot 11 though, I have a couple inches of headroom with the driver's seat around my height, still have good knee room and foot room. And the seat bases are at a good level to where I feel like I'm sitting in the seat very nicely. My knees aren't above in my chest or anything like that nice and flat there is a little hidden storage space down below good armrests good windows it is definitely a little compact back here compared to an x1 so this having that coupe appearance the rear end slopes downwards but it doesn't hinder headroom at all you can see they have a big cutout for your head however you can just see over your shoulder it's a little cramped looking back there 
But nonetheless, these seats are fine for adults. Genuinely, you can fit four people easily in this car. So not a bad little car with useful space. Moving on to the cargo area, I really like how you can just press the BMW badge and it's gonna automatically open up the lift gate. So there's a pretty good amount of space in here, really squared off. You can see how flat the load floor is. We also have a little bit of a cubby on the far right side, as well as that left side, and then a removable privacy cover, which is a cool touch to see. And with the seats folded down and the privacy cover removed, you can see just how much more storage space you're gonna get the back of the X2. Also worth noting, all three of these seats are individual, so it's nice to see how you can really mix and match how many seats you'd like up or down. Really easy to operate everything. They all have that same little strap in the center, but really easy car to work with and pretty practical for being on the small side. Of course, you can just tap the button up there or the lock button and automatically close everything. So setting off now. Not bad, obviously this isn't the fastest car out there, but with the dual clutch and the turbo motor, this thing is pretty peppy and you get up to speed really without thinking. So I like how this is kind of a fun car to drive. I think BMW does a good job not making slow cars, even if they're just four cylinders, they're still peppy and kind of fun to drive. Now, when you do the left paddle, like the boost mode, you hold it for a little bit, does that screen, gives you 10 seconds. It's just a sport boost. It's not exactly gonna blow your socks off. It basically puts it into sport mode for 10 seconds. So it's a cool little uh, touch to just kind of pop it into a more peppy setting. Overall ride quality and driving, this is a really nice car to be in. You know, you would think BMW's kind of their smallest crossover SUV would be kind of cheap feeling. It doesn't feel like that. This thing feels very comfortable. It's incredibly quiet and very smooth with the adaptive suspension. I mean, this car rides really good like a more expensive BMW. And when you do take turns fast, this thing is very composed. I love that this has the Pilot Sport 4S tires. That's what I have on all my sports cars. So to see those tires on the crossover is kind of cool and it really helps make this car feel more fun and agile and really confident to drive. You have a pretty good view out the front and the mirrors all do a great job. Visibility, given this is that coupe appearance, you know, that middle headrest, if it is in the up position, you cannot see out of this mirror at all. So luckily it does fold down. You know, it's a little cramped back there, obviously with the design of the car. Left shoulder's perfectly fine. So that's kind of the only thing that's gonna hinder you given this shape of the car. If you want this, but a little bit more normal, the X1 is your next best option. But overall, it's comfortable. The seats, the sports seats are really good. You know, they have the leg rest to make it to where they cradle your leg well. Really good back support and everything. So this is a nice car to be in. It feels roomy for being a small car. It feels very roomy and just a spacious place to be. The ergonomics are pretty good. Armrests are in a great place. Everything that you do touch feels nice as well. The screen, you know, not everybody's the biggest fan of the whole one screen. You know, I wish there were climate controls, just physical buttons. It would make it a little bit easier, because especially when you first get into the car, you gotta wait for the screen to turn on, and then you can crank up the fan or something like that. So only complaint, that's every BMW across the board. But overall, it feels like a pretty nice place to be when you hit big bumps. I mean, this car is solid. BMW makes really good rock solid cars. Even their lowest level cars are still built really well. So I like that aspect. It feels like a fun car to be in. It's easy to park, it's small, and yet it's actually roomy. You know, I brought a eight foot two by four home in this car. So you can fit big things in this car and use it like a practical SUV, but you're still gonna get good gas mileage and it's something that's kind of easy to just use. So my honest thoughts with the X2, I actually like this car quite a lot. Now I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments. $52,000 for a small crossover seems like a lot of money. Yeah, it's not cheap, but keep in mind this is a BMW, it's not a generic brand. And on the flip side, there are a ton of generic brand small crossovers for about 45 grand nicely equipped. So personally, if you're gonna spend 45 grand on a small generic brand crossover, I would just save up a little bit more and get a BMW of some sorts or another premium brand. Because honestly, this or an X1, you know, depending on the style you're looking for, let's just say 50 grand, if you take one or two options off of this car, I would much rather spend 50 grand on a BMW than 45 grand on a generic brand. Because when you're in this, it actually feels like a very nice car to be in. The materials are nice. You have a peppy, good engine versus, you know, a lot of the competition from the generic brands have little three cylinders and they're cheaper feeling cars. So 
So I don't feel like it's that bad in price when you compare it to the competition. You know, a premium brand car, there's a lot going for them and they truly do feel a lot better to drive and are nicer to drive than the generic brands. So I don't think it's that bad on price. Still 50 grand for a small compact is a nice chunk of change, obviously. But the last four years, obviously prices have all gone up. So that is what it is at this point. So it is nice to drive, I'm liking it. I really, really like the dashboard. I think more cars need to do something like that. Honestly, our Audi RS3, I wish had something like this on the dash instead of just the cheap plastic. So I think more car companies should do that because it makes the car feel even more upscale having nicer materials. There's really nothing cheap on this car. Yes, this is all plastic. However, it does look nice, it feels nice as well. So I feel like they've done a good job giving you a premium feeling car without going overboard. And keep in mind, this one has you know a $4,000 premium package. I would get the M Sport package because I think the adaptive suspension makes a lot. The drive modes, they certainly change the characteristics quite a bit. But you know maybe the premium package is something I wouldn't need, although that does give it a more premium interior and things like that. So I think you can kind of mix and match the X1 and the X2 and get a spec that is going to be under 50 grand, honestly. And you're going to get a really nice driving car at the end of the day that feels like something even more expensive. And if you're going to drop, like I said, you know, 45 grand on a generic brand, this is a lot nicer, honestly. But even in the basic form, this thing's quick. The X Drive all wheel drive gives you that confidence. Honestly, this is, this is a peppy, fun to drive car. And I think that's one of my favorite things with BMW. All of their cars, even if it's the most basic one, they feel solid and they feel sporty. You know, BMW really uh, targets their cars to be, you know, the ultimate driving machine. They're about the driver, not just about all the bells and whistles. And you see that across the board. I've driven tons of BMWs. We obviously film quite a lot of them. And they all are driver's cars. They feel really nice to be in. And the X2, no shortage of just being a nice place to be. You got all the creature comforts. It's a good sized car. And it's definitely something to take into consideration if you're looking for that smaller compact and maybe you know the ones in the mid 40s are just a little too cheap feeling a little too underpowered with little three cylinders honestly this is something to go for but overall that is my thoughts on the 2024 x2 uh, comment below what do you guys think of this is this a car worth buying for 52 grand would you spec it a little bit differently this one very nicely equipped and i don't think you can really go wrong with one of these cars if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for plenty more content and i'll see you all in the next video there we go, there we go, there we go.